we're going to be talking about edibles. Come join us at one of our Elevate Your Knowledge classes so you can have the opportunity to learn more about the products and services that Trulieve offers. Hi, good evening. Good evening and welcome to Trulieve's Elevate Your Knowledge where we're going to be exploring the world of edibles today. Without further ado, I am going to introduce our keynote speaker tonight who I'm really excited to, uh, to hear speak. We've had a lot of conversations um, and a lot of planning up to now and I'm just as excited as you guys probably are to hear from Mr. Ethan Zahn. So I guess I'm best known as being the cancer survivor that won the reality TV show Survivor. And listen, I'm just happy I wasn't on that show, The Walking Dead. So we can be happy about that. How many people have actually seen the show Survivor in here? You have a show of hands, great. How many have not seen the show Survivor? Okay, well you're gonna have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but the game of Survivor and cancer did change my life. And the experience I had navigating all of those touched every part of me as a human being. Mental, physical, social, spiritual, environmental, even financial. Similar to the way that cancer challenges you, but we all know that cancer and any form of illness is not really a game. And these challenges aren't supposed to beat us down, but rather the opposite, empower us, build us up, enable us to go out there and make a difference as individuals and as a community. It's a chance to change the narrative, and that's why I'm here tonight, everyone. I'll share my journey with cannabis, and how I turn some of my challenges into opportunities. And then we're gonna hear from Sage, who is the lead community educator at True Leave. And then we'll open up the floor to some questions for all you guys. And my first experience at being a true survivor was when I was 14 years old. It was a year that cancer came into my home and it took my father away from me. And so you can imagine when I was diagnosed in my 30s, how fearful I was of what was gonna be going on in my life. You know, science wasn't able to save my dad in 1989, but science and cannabis was able to save me. And this is how that all went down. I was diagnosed with a rare form of blood cancer called CD20 positive Hodgkin's lymphoma. Trust me, I'd never heard of it either. I had to endure multiple rounds of chemotherapy, 22 blasts of radiation, and my first stem cell transplant, also known as a bone marrow transplant. But my expert team of doctors were psyched because they got the disease under control for a while. The cancer returned just 20 months later. And getting the news that the cancer returned was deflating. And growing up with sports, like I never really touched the stuff. You know, like I never smoked weed. I didn't really get into that type of thing. I didn't do much drinking because I wanted to be a, a sports guy. I mean, I did try smoking weed second semester my senior year of college just to do something crazy before I graduate, you know? So don't tell my mom again. Um, but there was so much stigma associated with being an athlete and using cannabis. You know, they said, it's a gateway drug, it's bad. You know, you're gonna die, these fear tactics. But for me, and I think a lot of people like me, it was the exact opposite. It was like the, uh, the un-gateway. It, it actually, cannabis was enabled me to get off some of these synthetic drugs that I was on. And I was on a cyclical cycle of synthetic drugs that were prescribed to me by my oncologists. Or I could take an edible, right? That was the difference for me. So like when I told my docs that I wanted to use cannabis to help mitigate the side effects of treatments, they were like, uh, okay. They just shrugged and they said, don't smoke it, Ethan. It's like, all right. So if you can believe it, there wasn't one trained oncologist, one nurse practitioner, one doctor at my cancer center that could advise me on how to use cannabis with cancer. You know, so I went to the internet, I used my friends of friends, and I finally found a woman in Massachusetts named Janibus Cannabis. And I paid 250 bucks for a 60 minute telephone session with her, and she educated me all about cannabis. I never smoked it, I still don't smoke it, but I cooked it, I made edibles with it, and I was able to slowly reduce some of the dosages of the synthetic meds that I prescribed, and I was able to eliminate others completely. And with cannabis, that uncontrollable feeling I was mentioning earlier, um, it kind of went away. Because when I was using cannabis, it was a more predictable feeling, it was a more consistent feeling than always kind of chasing the feeling of a synthetic pill. Because I needed to know like, when can I be intoxicated? When am I gonna fall asleep? When am I gonna be nauseous? So all through the day, I was kind of 
planning my day. When am I going to take the pill? When's it going to wear off? When do I got to take the next one? And it just became a full-time job just to figure out how I wanted to use these drugs. Or like I said, I could start using cannabis and it created predictability and balance in my life. Uh, unwise, unguided cannabis use for people with real medical issues is a problem. And get this, 40% of cancer patients use cannabis. 25% of can cancer patients would like to use cannabis, but don't know how. And 70% of oncologists don't feel comfortable having a conversation about cannabis with their patients because they aren't educated enough. And you know, I am incredibly sensitive to what I put inside my body. Um, so I was so impressed with True Leave products that um, I wanted to partner with them to run the Boston Marathon. And I actually started exercising while using cannabis. Like growing up, I'd always, if I were to use, I kept it separate. Cannabis was over here, sports was over here. But I brought them together to run the Boston Marathon. But for me, like cannabis is just another tool in the shed to make myself feel better and to be able to function in this world in a positive way. And I still struggle with anxiety. I have a tough time sleeping. I've got old crusty bones. So I'm still using you know, cannabis today. I almost use CBD and cannabis like a multivitamin. I take it every day and it's really unlocked a healthier, more balanced lifestyle for myself. And now that I've survived cancer twice and I actually surpassed my um, father's age this year, I turned 50 and he was 49, um, I've decided to live the rest of my life by making sure to never let a crisis go to waste because it's an opportunity to do some really important things. In life, there are only two things that we can be absolutely certain about. One, we're all gonna have to die. And two, we're all gonna have to live until we die. How are you going to live? So thank you so much for having me. The tribe has spoken. <laughs> we all came here tonight to talk about edibles. What are edibles? So first thing that comes to mind, you think of you know, cookies, brownies, cakes, all the sweet stuff, right? And that's exactly what it is. They're food products that are infused with cannabis extract. So it's just another form or different way to medicate cannabis. And we're gonna talk about some reasons why you would choose edibles and um, the, the different types um, of edibles that True Leaf offers in our stores. The products at True Leaf have been made to taste good, of course, and to provide many different options. So if you don't like chocolate, well, have a gummy. If you don't like gummy, um, have a brownie, have a cookie. So, and then there's different flavors within those as well. Um, but just for your information, some of the different variations within these categories of food products, uh, edible food products would be like sugar-free options, uh, full spectrum options. So uh, when we talk about full spectrum, that's a full spectrum cannabis extract oil, which also includes other minor cannabinoids besides THC, uh, terpenes, flavonoids, and all the fun stuff that comes with cannabis that has found to be medicinal as well. Um, but I know a lot of the, just the regular standard gummies are just a THC distillate. So you're just getting the THC see kind of that pain relieving cannabinoid without some of the other minor ones that are often overlooked. Uh, fast acting in nano. So nanotechnology is a really cool um, innovative way to um, introduce new products to True Leave, but also um, their, their products that are fast acting. So where a lot of people would argue, you know, I don't take edibles because I don't have time for it to kick in. I have to go in and clean up, I need to do chores, or maybe, you know, it's past my bedtime, I should have been asleep an hour ago. That would be, my argument back would be, well, have you looked into a nano edible or a nano product in general? Moving forward, ratio products. So again, looking just in the gummies or true gel line, um, we have a variation of uh, CBD and THC or THC and CBN gummies where uh, people can kind of uh, uh, personalize their relief instead of you know taking the same 10 milligram THC uh, serving every single time. There are other options within the edible categories. So the first and probably most popular edible product at True Leave are the gels or gummies. Um, you can see the picture here. These are branded Sweet Talk. So if you see that on our website or in our store, that's what that is. And really all it is is, is it's your typical gummy. Um, they are dosed 10 milligrams per piece and in the entire package, 100 milligrams. So when you go to the store and you purchase th this product, um, it would be dispensed 100 milligrams out of your edible route administration. Um, and you can all have access to that yourself. But this is the, the database that we use in order to um, track how, how often you're, you're coming in. 
uh, nano gel. So this is my favorite thing to talk about only because it's something that has been uh, done in the pharmaceutical industry for a while. Um, however, it, it is newly introduced to cannibal, cannabis and it's because it is a very um, intricate process. It takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, and a lot of proprietary information and knowledge. You have to have the right people in the right places in order to get this right, especially when it comes to dealing with food products and cannabis. So what nanotechnology is, is it's a, um, they use ultrasound ultrasonic waves and they basically blast the oil molecules so the best metaphor i have to to give to people to explain nanotechnology is um, regular bioavailability of an oil-based product is imagine uh, trying to throw tennis balls through a chain link fence you might get one or two through but for the most part the bioavailability is going to be pretty low nanotechnology basically shrinks those tennis balls into like ping pong size balls. So you're gonna get a lot more of those ping pong balls through the chain link fence. So you have a greater bioavailability, which means you're absorbing the medicine more and increased bioavailability. But also because the molecules are smaller, they're gonna, it's gonna go into effect quicker. So rather than waiting an hour, hour and a half for this edible to kick in, you're looking more at 15, 20, 30, sometimes 45 minutes. Again, varies from person to person, but nonetheless, a quicker effect. RSO gels, so if you see the, the abbreviation RSO, that's Rick Simpson oil. Uh, Rick Simpson oil is just a full spectrum cannabis extract. So again, where you have a distillate, that's just the THC extracted out by itself. RSO combines sort of the other minor cannabinoids, flavonoids, terpenes, and it's more of a full body effect for an edibles. And lastly, live rosin gels. This is for more of my connoisseurs. It's a solventless uh, extraction technique to where it's just freshly harvested flash frozen flour. Um, and they're really not touching it too much. Um, whereas some of the other gels are using things like ethanol and alcohol. Um, of course, all of that is extracted out and we test to make sure it's all extracted out. But when you're choosing a live rosin gel, none of that is involved. This is a completely solventless um, extraction technique where basically the buds are shaken really, really fast and all those trichomes kind of fall through a very, a very fine knit screen um, and you collect all those yummy trichomes and make these live rosin gels. Chocolate bars here, 10 milligram per square, but you're gonna get a square of 10. So 100 milligrams per package, 10 milligrams per square. We've had some fun flavors here like horchata, um, I think raspberry dark and mint chocolate. And then lastly, the drink mixes. So we have released a tonic drink powder. Now these powders are five milligrams per pack. So it's a great kind of micro do dose option if 10 milligrams is too much to start off with. Um, and again, this does use nanotechnology. So if you wanna try out that nano technology and maybe don't wanna do a gummy or you wanna start lower than a 10 milligram gummy, this might be another option for you. What is your favorite part about the edible experience? I'll take this one first. Um, I think I've really, really enjoyed the nano products. For me, a big barrier to edibles was I didn't want to wait. That was one of the things I didn't really um, tend to choose edibles too much is because I was used to a quick onset. I was used to, you know, feeling better now. Um, and as a young kid, that's what, you know, there's no patience involved, right? You want it now. I want to feel better now. And I'm sure Ethan going through cancer, you, when you're in pain, you know, you want the relief now. And so, um, I did like edibles. I liked the effect they gave me, but I was really, you know, impatient waiting for it. Um, so I think when the nano products came out, the nano gummies, um, even the, the tonic powder, um, really to see something transition, which it didn't transition, it was just a new technology that was added. Um, for me to actually start enjoying edibles and enjoying the quick onset, it actually propelled me into trying the other edible products and being more open-minded to full spectrum options and ratio options. And um, of course, you all know I'm, I'm getting my master's degree in this, so of course I'm nerd out a little bit about it, but um, to see minor cannabinoids get a spotlight like CBN and CBD um, in products like edibles has been a really cool experience. And um, I usually tend to go for more of the, the live rosin and the, the CBN, THC, and the CBD to THC, um, so I can really kind of mix up my regimen and my tolerance doesn't build to just a typical 10 milligram every single time, capsule, tincture, edible. I kind of like to change things up. so. To make a long answer longer, I would say um, nanotechnology edibles or nano edibles as we call them um, has probably been my best experience. Same question to Ethan, your favorite um, experience around the, the edibles. I mean, I'm not as exciting as Sage, but I come at this from like just the whole medical perspective. So I'm just looking for predictability, consistency, 
dosage, right? Like I know what I need, I need it, and how long it's gonna take, and I can prepare for that. So that for me is the most exciting a part of edibles because I know exactly what I'm gonna get every single time I take it. I gravitate towards the RSOs, the full spectrums, because I feel like it's just the, the most natural form of the plant. I don't know, without smoking it, I guess you can say. I've seen like cannabinoid drinks at concert venues, as well as national brands uh, looking at doing possibly like Lipton iced tea, doing like a cannabinoid like iced tea. Where do you guys kind of see the future of this going, like more towards that way, and what's truly going to kind of bring into that with the future of it? The drink, the beverage industry is definitely um, coming into cannabis. Um, I can't really predict, you know, what is truly going to do, but I do see a heavy focus just in the community in general on beverages. Um, I think it's neat to think about a beverage product because you think about it, you have that barrier under your tongue. It's the blood brain barrier they talk about, right? And so when you're eating an edible, you kind of surpass that and it just goes through the digestive tract. But with beverages, some of that gets caught up in that mucous membrane, right? And so um, there's, you know, studies and, and things that show that you do get, you know, two different layers of relief when you have uh, some sublingual or, or uh, absorption in the mouth before you digest. So um, it's hard to say for truly, I think um, beverages is, is something up and coming, um, especially, you know, I was talking about the minor cannabinoids. I know a lot of, you know, CBN, THCV, CBG, um, there's a lot of research just now happening. We're finally getting funding and things like that and recognition to be able to do this. So I think that's what you'll see is some variations within um, the cannabinoid spectrum first and then maybe uh, shoot out um, into things like beverages. So this is kind of a two part question, maybe part for Ethan, part for Sage. Um, Ethan, in your early days when you were kind of making your own stuff, um, did you ever overdo it? I know a lot of us, that's kind of why I don't gravitate towards edibles all the time. Have you ever overdone it? And then are there any tips, tricks to help you kind of get over that when it when it's too much yeah i definitely have overdone it uh you know when i was cooking it myself and trying to figure out how to make a cookie or a brownie in my kitchen i made some errors um you know but the error was better than like i accidentally took um five ativan instead of five folic acid acid you know when i was going through again so five ativan i was and i had to go out whatever i had to go shopping with my wife's father and I was a mess. I was like, you know, I couldn't even look at him in the eye. My head was down. So anyway, so that's a bad scenario. Overdoing it on an edible, obviously you can have some, you know, trippy experiences. What I've learned and what I've read that is if that does happen to you and you're going too deep into the hole, I guess CBD sometimes counteracts the kind of um, uh, anxiety and psychoactive aspects of THC. So if you're flipping out and you've taken too much, just crush some CBD if you have it. Um, that's kind of what I've learned, but definitely made some mistakes. Yeah. No, or yep. eat, eat. Yeah, he hit it on the, on the head. I always say keep CBD in the medicine cabinet. It's an emergency go-to. I mean, I use it daily. I encourage people to use it daily. Again, talk to your doctor first about incorporating that into your routine, but um, I use can uh, CBD daily, and so I always have CBD at home. So for me, that's like kind of my go-to um, emergency, you know, um, I'm not, it's too much for me is CBD. Um, if you don't have CBD or ran out or something, um, a lot of water, drinking a lot of water, of course, sleeping it off is like last resort. Sometimes you don't have any other option. Um, and then also something that I learned was black peppercorns. So chewing black peppercorns, don't ask me the science. I could probably find it on Google for you, but uh, chewing black peppercorns actually does help um, alleviate some of the uh, psychoactive effects of THC if you're if you overdid it. Um, with that being said, if we can get one more round of applause for our wonderful speakers, Ethan Zong and Sage Pencil.